We're going to show you around this room. It's a purpose built room for our table tennis and dancing. Chris and I teach table, uh, Chris and I teach rock and roll and we also play table tennis. And we have a little um, YouTube channel for rock and, rock and roll as well. So if you'd like to see that and see what we do, there's the link somewhere. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to show you how I make some sound blankets to try and reduce some of the echo in this room. Stick around. So this is a glimpse of the room that we've built. It was a um, shed, a tin, a steel shed, and we've just lined the whole shed with, um, with the walls on the ceiling as well. And last week we've had a new bamboo floor installed. And what we need to do here is get rid of this echo. So we've got a massive room for the table and a massive space for us to do our dancing. And it's a great entertainer entertainment area as well. So here's the walls. We'll be filling all this up with sand blankets and I've decided to make a decorative feature of the blankets as well. So I'll show you what I'm going to do there. Well, before I go any further with this video, I've just discovered that me going hoo-wee isn't good enough. Apparently there's a recognised scientific way to determine how much echo there is in a room and that is I should shut up when I do it. And the I don't know, but something to do with clapping will determine how good an echo this room has. It's got a pretty good echo at the moment. Hoping to get rid of it. Now the first thing you want to do is determine what length you want your uh, sound blankets to be. So we've had picture rails installed all the way around the room and that's where we're actually going to hang these blankets from. So if I would take a measurement from the top of the picture rail down to where I want to finish my blanket which is at approximately 102 inches. So I back the down to the top of the screen board is 103 and a half inches. I'm going just a couple of inches above that, and I think my blankets are going to be around about 102 inches long. So what you want to do then is once you've determined the length of your curtain, you want to now before I start, I want to mention that I'm working in inches today purely because it's much easier to read by tape measure standing away at the table like, like this. So I can see the inches much better than I can see the centimetres or the millimetres. So first thing, we're working in inches instead of centimetres. So now that we know that we're working in inches, um, you take your measurement and you add four inches to that. Now we're going to have a one inch hem at the bottom, but that extra three inches is just to allow for any um, off grain in the fabric or incorrect cutting or anything like that. So it just gives us a little bit of leeway in case there's any mistakes or anything that goes wrong with the fabric. So I've allowed 102 inches for the length of my blanket. I'm going to add 4 inches to that, so that's 106 inches. Now that's only for the face. Mine are double sided blankets, so I want to double that. So 106 inches by 2 is 212 inches. And that's the length of fabric that I'm going to cut for these. So whatever you decide to do, measure your wall, your finished length that you want, add four inches to that, and then double it. And that'll give you enough room to play with to be able to make your blankets. Now the first thing you do when we start is take our doubled length plus the four inches for him, and we fold it right sides together. So I've got my great big long length of fabric in whatever size or whatever length you choose to have. Just take it and fold it together. So this is my cut edge and this is my salvage, both of the salvages. And I'm just lining up the salvages all the way until I get to the top. And I'll be clipping that together or pinning. So all I want to do is just line up the salvages. I want those nice and straight. 
And I'll clip that together all the way to the top. So all the way to the top fold there and we'll do exactly the same thing for the other side and we just want to make sure that we line up our salvages. So when you've clipped one side, lay it all out nice and flat. Make sure it's nice and flat and there's no ripples in there and then you can clip the other end together as well. Okay, once you've done that, then we'll take that to the sewing machine and we'll sew up those two long edges. So with both long edges clipped together, and I've got the salvages on the side here, what I want to do is make sure that you can't actually see these salvages when you turn the fabric through. So usually I like to use my presser foot as the guide as to where I'm going to sew, but this time I'm actually going to use well, my needle's going to come down just beside the edge of the salvage there and that works out round about where this plastic cover starts. So I'm going to be looking at the plastic cover, the guide there. That's going to be my guide for my seam width. What I'll do here is I'll just do a back stitch just to secure that in place and I'm going to stitch all the way down and just make sure that my salvages are nice and straight because I don't want to see any of these salvage lines when I turn my fabric through. So I'm lining up my fabric just on the edge of my plastic cover. And I'll go all the way down to the end, back stitch at the end, and I'll do exactly the same thing for the other side of the fabric. going to back stitch as I get to the end. You'll notice that there's different lengths here. That's just because of the cut of the fabric and the way I've cut it and um, pieced it together. But I allowed plenty and that's why we do want to make sure we allow plenty for the hem. And we'll repeat that for the other side. And once we finish sewing the both sides, what we want to do is just trim the corner out of the top edge. So I've done that already. So the folded edge is there and we'll just take a little bit of a trim out of the corner and that when we turn it through will help release, remove some of the bulk and it makes it easier to stitch. And also we've got to chop out or cut out our eyelets as well. So turn this through. So when you turn this through, just poke your arm up through there and we'll poke the corner out. And if you need to use a pin or, or a quick unpick to help poke the corner out. So we want to have a nice square corner like that. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. Poke the corner out and then we can go and top stitch all the way down. So where my seam is here, we actually want to bring that across and top stitch all the way down. And we'll do that for both sides. So just position this underneath the machine. And all I'm using is the edge of my foot as a guide. And at the top it's a little bit bulky so I just want to make sure I go slow just in case I break a needle. Back stitch and continue on all the way down to the end making sure that that side seam is on the side that it's not pointing down too far or facing up too much because we want this to sit nicely on the side so that it looks nice and flat on the wall. 
Remove your clips as you go. And we'll do this all the way down the end and we'll do the same thing for the other side of the wall blanket. Now when you get to the end, or nearly the end, you don't want to sew all the way down because later on when we fold, when we trim this and we fold the fabric under, we want to be able to press, hold these seams open and fold them under so that they sit a little bit flatter. So I'm only going to sew to a few inches or six or six or so inches from the bottom because I expect I'll probably be trimming this down to about here and I'll need a good two inches to be able to turn my hem under so that I can sit this comfortably underneath. So when you get to the end, or almost the end, just back stitch and take it off and work on the other side. And I'll show you that when we get to the hem, what I mean by, by turning this to the others, to the sides. Both edges are now stitched down, top stitched down. And what I'm left to do is just secure the top of the, the folded edge at the top of the fabric. So this is going to be hanging like this on the wall and I want to be able to put my eyelets in. Now I'm going to do a row of top stitching at the top but then I'm going to do another row of stitching about an inch, inch and a half lower. And I'm just going to use the edge of my, um, the guides on my machine to find out where I'm going to stitch from. So I don't have a hard and fast rule as to what distance your top stitching and other stitching should be. But basically what I want to do is make sure I have my top stitching done at the top, that'll just secure the fold down. The other row of stitching will sit underneath where the eyelets are going to be placed. So all I have to do now is just smooth this out Clip it down or pin it, just so that it doesn't shift when I'm sewing. And I'll go and do two rows of stitching just to secure that down so that's ready for the eyelets. The first row of stitching, I'll just be using the edge of my foot as a guide. So just forward, back stitch. And stitch all the way down to the other side. When I get to the other end, all I want to do is just finish it off with a back stitch. So go back to the top end and I want to do that second row of stitching. It's more really just a decorative feature, not that you'll really notice it, but I do want to have something just underneath the eyelets. It helps me to place my eyelets as well. So what I'm going to do now is use the metal edge of my foot. So it's well, probably a good inch and a half or so away, probably even further. So if I run the edge of my fabric, along the edge of the metal part of my foot and I'm just going to sight this rather than my needle that'll give me a nice straight line. Back stitch again and just follow this edge of the fabric along the edge of the metal part of the foot. And when I get to the end I'll do a back stitch as well. That's all I've got to do. So this gives me now a nice wide area to put my eyelets. It's a little bit decorative so you can see a row of stitching just at the top there and then another row of stitching about an inch and a half from the top. And my eyelets or grommets are going to sit right in between that. With some of the extra floorboards that we had left over, on the end of the table I've just rigged up this little end piece. So what I'm going to do here is fix my um, wall hanging or my blanket to the end of the board there and I've just secured this with some clamps at the edge of the table. 
And this will actually enable me to take a good long measurement of the fabric that I've got to measure out. So let me show you how I've done this. I've got some clamps here and I'm just going to use these clamps to clamp this fabric onto the edge of my board here. So what I want to do is have the fabric folded over and butted up to the edge of the table so there's no crease or, or gap or anything like that. So I want to have this pushed right up against the board and I'm lining it up with the edge of my board. So I'm using the same edge of the board for each one of my curtain or wall hanging pieces that I'm using. So I just clamp that on and that clamp is pushed right down to the corner of the table. Now I've taken this into account when measuring my wall lengths as well because there is a good inch and a half or so here. Okay, so all I need to do now is flatten this out all the way to the other end of the table and then I'll take my measurement from this fold here. So if I find my tape measure, when I'm taking my measurement, I've actually got my tape measure butted up to the edge of the board here and then I'll measure my, my length that I want all the way down to the other side. But I've just got to make sure that this is butted up all the way along these edges here. So we'll go down to the other side, we'll smooth it all out, go down to the other end and then we'll take our measurement. Now I've smoothed this all out and it's nice and taut and flat from the top edge down there all the way down to the bottom end here. And this is the area that I want to hem now. Okay, so as I said before, I'm measuring this tape from the bottom edge of the board all the way down here. Now my measurement is 100 inches and that's taking into account a one inch seam allowance or a hem allowance. So my 100 inches down here, which is about 2 metres 54, that's the length that I'm measuring. It's actually going to be a little bit longer because of that little lip at the top of the fabric there. And I'm just going to make a mark of 100 inches at increments all the way across. So I'm just moving my tape measure over a little bit, making sure it's at the top edge of my board and marking off my 100 inches. So if you're making one of these, you'll have your own length. Yeah. We've got quite high walls, so our walls are about, oh, about three metres in height. And these are just going to sit up just above the skirting boards. And then I'm just going to take a long ruler and all those markings I've made, I'm just going to join them all up. And this is my cutting line. So you should be able to see a blue marker all the way across. This is where I'm cutting and then I'll be measuring an inch up to do my final hem. Now you'll notice I've got a cutting mat underneath here. I've got to make sure I look after the table otherwise Chris will kill me. Um, but we don't want to have any scratches on the table. It might affect my game. <laughs> I've just cut through all the layers there and I'm now ready to hem this at one inch. So all I want to do is fold this up by an inch, both sides, I'll clamp it together and then we'll stitch it all the way down. Now when I was sewing the sides up earlier I did mention not to go all the way to the very end when I was doing this, the top stitching on the sides. And the reason for that is because when we trim the fabric and we fold the hem over, we want to be able to open out the inside seam. 
So we don't want to have it all folded in one direction. It creates too much bulk. So fold the seams open away from each other when you actually fold this hem down by an inch. Same for the other side, exactly the same there. We want to not come down all the way to the end just so that it makes it a little, a little bit easier for us to be able to open these seams out. So measure down an inch on either side and then what we can do is when we take these clamps out or the clips out, we can pinch that together and clip it together again. And what I'll do at the sewing machine is I'll just come straight down here, start about here, come down and then stitch all the way down. So what I've done here is I've hemmed this one inch or measured this one inch on both sides, back and front. And all I'm going to do now is just clamp it together with these clips. And I want to centre this as well so that it sits nice and flat on the wall. So find the middle, take the clips out and just clip them together like that all the way around to the end. So that's all clipped together and all we need to do now, as I've said, is just finish off that stitching down the side here and look, it's probably only a couple of inches that I need to do. Stitch down there and do a, just about a quarter of an inch all the way along the edge there. So I'll go and do that at the machine now. With both edges clipped together at the bottom now, we're ready to stitch this closed. So this is the last step in our blankets. Well, except for the eyelets, of course. Um, so where we've top stitched down here, but we didn't actually finish coming down, I'm going to just complete that. And I'll start up a little bit higher and I'll just go over that top stitching and come down to the end and there's a fair bit of bulk down here so you just want to make sure you go slowly and come to the end do it almost at the end do a little bit of a back stitch come forward again and when you're happy to turn your work lift the needle or lift your presser foot put it back down again go slow at this point there's so much bulk here and I'm using the edge of my foot as a guide again. And all I'm going to do is sew these two folded edges closed. Now I'll go all the way down to the other end, but then I'll come back up again to finish off that top stitching that I hadn't finished earlier. probably see it's quite bulky here so just go slow you don't want to break a needle turn your work around and come back up until you join up with that top stitching that you finished earlier and there we go we've completely closed in our sound blanket. So all that's left for us to do is the eyelets at the top of the blankets. Now that we're almost finished, the only thing that we have to do now is create the holes for the eyelets to go through. So there's a few things that we're going to need and that is our sound blanket. But we will also need a barbecue book. <laughs> And I'm actually using this big thick book. It's 
as my buffer so when I start hammering it doesn't make too much noise and it doesn't create too much of an impact or a shock impact on the surface that I'm actually hammering on. I'm using a piece of old flooring on top of that and that's just my nice hard surface because you need to have a really hard surface to be able to hammer and um, if you have a surface, your hard surface is hard enough then you don't need to have anything more but I've got a nice heavy, big strong piece of brass I think it's brass because I think copper is soft and would bend so this is brass, pretty thick and heavy now I'm actually going to be hammering onto that when I use my punch tool. Um, so the other thing I need is some eyelets. So I've got my eyelets and the eyelet other side thingamajig that clamps them together. And I have my eyelet crimping tool. Okay. So this you can get off eBay. Uh, look, you can get these um, punches off eBay as well and the eyelets in varying sizes. So I'm using a 12mm eyelet and I think it's a 10mm punch. Should probably put some glasses on. But stick around and I'm going to show you how I hammer holes into the fabric and then punch, punch that through and make my eyelets. Taking the top of the fabric, this is where you've um, done your two rows of stitching. So you've done a row of top stitching along here and another row of stitching. And you can barely even see this row of stitching here but I want my eyelets to be around about there so what I'm going to do with this piece of fabric this is only a narrow one I'm going to make a mark where I want my first eyelet to be and this is where the holes going to be punched and the second eyelet will be in the same distance from the corner and you can use a ruler to measure this. I've done so many of these, I'm just doing them by sight. And what you want to do is bring it together in, on the ends and find your centre and mark your centre. So for these narrow ones, I'm only going to put three grommets in or three eyelets in so this. One there, one there, and one here. If I'm doing the bigger ones, and I've got no bigger ones left to do, I'm going to put seven eyelets in. And you'll do the same thing. You'll mark the point for the first eyelet on the ends, both ends and then one for the centre and then evenly space, so this is the centre hole and the edge, evenly space the other two holes so that you can have seven grommets or eyelets in the big pieces. So all I need to do now, now that I've measured where I'm going to put my eyelets, is actually make the eyelets or make the holes. Now I forgot to mention that a hammer is also very important. So. Take your pick or hammer. Um, I'm going to use, usually I use this, but I found that I had to hammer quite a bit. So this one's quite heavy, um, it's more of a mallet, I think. Um, so I'm going to give that one a try instead. So where I've got my little blue marker here is where I'm going to position my punch. So I'll take the sharp end of the punch with the hole in it and just place that evenly over the top of my fabric with my piece of brass underneath, my barbecue cookbook underneath that just as a bit of a buffer and just hammer that down. And because of the thickness of the fabric this isn't going to create a hole straight away. So it can take a few hammers to get through, it just depends on the angle that you're holding the hammer, how much pressure you're putting on it as well. 
Um, and we'll just keep on going with all of the blankets that I've got to do now. Position the punch over the top of the hole. Make sure you're the same distance from that line that you've sewn earlier. So you can see why I need this piece of brass. I've got lots of damage in that and if I had just been doing that straight on my desk I would have gone through the desk already. Um, the book is the buffer and that's, that's the one that receives all the punishment. So now we're ready to go and put the eyelets in for the rest of this. Alright, so I've taken the cookbook away, don't need that anymore and we don't need the brass bar anymore either. So we've got the eyelets made in our blankets and what we need to do now is take these eyelet pieces and crimp them through. So the one that looks like a hat, it's got a little lip at the top, goes into your grommet machine or your tool. The blanket goes on the top and just fits over your die. And then this little ring sits in over the top. And press that down, get your fingers out of the way, it hurts. And press down. And there we go, we have an eyelet done. So this is the right side of the fabric and that's the wrong side. So this is what we're going to see when we're hanging the blankets up on the wall. So grab the next one, put the little, the little hat thing on your die, blanket down, get your ring, and it's better if you're standing over the top of it so that you can give it maximum force. Press down and continue on for all the blankets that you decide to make. That's it, that's the finish of the blanket. So I will go and put the eyelets in the rest of the blankets that I've got, hang them on the wall and then show you how it all looks. So if I take you back to the beginning of the video where we heard And now you're hearing The echo is a lot less so I'm pretty happy with how this room has turned out. I did make one extra sound blanket, so if I want to, I can hang that onto one of the end walls. We've still got TV, other bits and pieces to bring in, um, which I will do shortly. So that will, as I said, help remove some, some, some of that extra echo. I think this has turned out to be a pretty good project. I'm going to take you for a little walk around and show you how the walls have turned out. Um, this is all upholstery fabric that I've used. I did forget to mention that. Now, I'm lucky, I actually rescue fabric, so I didn't pay a cent for any of this fabric. Um, and I, rather than just having the same colour all the way through, I've decided to go for two different fabrics, just to make it look a little bit more arty, I guess, to give it a design feature to the room. Um, and I'm happy with how that's turned out. I've still got some more hooks to cut go in. I've got them ordered on eBay, so um, not enough hooks are around the wall at the moment. They'll all be put up next week when the hooks turn up. And I just wanted to mention the eyelets that I have used. They've just been purchased off eBay. The um, tool that I've used, the grommet machine, 
that's from eBay as well. You don't have to use eyelets if you want to, you can use a rod and just um, allow extra to fold the fabric over at the top and just feed a rod through and you can hang your, your blankets from a rod. Doesn't matter what you use to hang them, but we had um, our picture rails put in with this in mind. So uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with how it's turned out. So thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next video. Let me know if there's anything you want me to make for you and I'll try and get that done. Uh, I'll sign off for now and show you how the room looks. See you next time. So one wall has got three bays and what I've done is just alternated the um, colour coordination of the fabric. So I've got a large grey in the centre on this bay with the two narrow reds and then I've done the opposite over here and reversed it again on that side. The end wall will end up having a TV. There is room to put more blankets if I feel I need more um, sound absorbency. And the other side I've done the same thing as what's on the opposite wall. Just a short one there, add onto the deck there and that's the other end wall. So I do have an extra blanket for that particular wall. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video.